Right, it's time for the big screens. Now if you haven't been following along, let me just explain what's going on. For the past uh, seven or eight years I've used this display and latterly have incorporated it into my Twin Otter cockpit. This is a three screen display using 19 inch LCD monitors. These are old fashioned 4x3 or actually 5x4 monitors, 1280x1024 pixels. Very good quality NEC monitors and I have no complaints about them but it is time to go bigger and wider. Now I have a set of three 32 inch TVs that I'm planning to install in place of these. I'll try and show you one of those here. It's kind of unwieldy but there it is. Uh, you know, it's a TV at the end of the day. Now the obvious problem I'm going to face with this is that this into this will not go. It's too big and uh, three of them are simply not going to fit into here without some modification. So I've identified so far at least three different engineering problems I'm going to have to solve. The first one is everything you see here above my head is going to have to go up by about 10 centimeters. I need to measure that precisely. I'm estimating it's about 10 centimeters. That's the difference in height between the old monitors and the new monitors. So that's engineering problem number one. Engineering problem number two is these side supports have got to go. There's one at each side. They've currently got the speakers mounted on them. The speakers will come off as well and be remounted somewhere. But those supports are going to be, you can see they were designed you know, to encapsulate this three screen display originally but they're going to have to go because they'll be right in the way of the new monitors which will come out much further depending on the angle obviously. Now I've determined these are not actually structural so it should be possible to remove those maybe with a little bit of extra reinforcement to the frame. So that should be doable. Engineering problem number two Problem number three is simply how to mount the three monitors. Now they've all got stands, so they should be able to stand on a flat surface. The question is, depending on the degree of um, convergence, if you like, because the, the two side monitors, I mean these side monitors are slightly tilted in, but not too much. The, the new ones I think are going to be tilted in a little bit more, or maybe not, we'll see. So anyway, there's a question about the precise details of how these new monitors are going to stand on there. But it shouldn't be anything too complicated. Everything else is just fiddling, you know, I've got to take things apart, move things around. Access at the sides is kind of difficult. And of course, we all know that for every problem I've identified, there's probably going to be another two or three problems come up along the way that I haven't anticipated. So that's what we're doing today. And I just need to get stuck in now and do it. Okay, so we're part way there. We've got the old screens out, and I've got this, these vertical supports have now been removed successfully. Nothing's fallen apart. <laughs> now, actually, having measured the panels that I'm taking out and the panels I'm putting in, I think I'm going to get away without actually having to move this structure up. I did say I was going to move it up by 10 centimeters. I think ideally I would like to do that. But that's by far the most challenging engineering problem and I think I'm going to get away without doing that. So of course I'm going to get the additional width, I'm going to get some additional height and some of that extra height is going to be slightly hidden, well not hidden but obscured by the top of the dash. But it's going to be visible if I look over and that's somewhat realistic. If you imagine sitting in an aircraft and having to look over the dash to, to see further ahead or to see downwards. So that's going to be my starting point. We'll see how that goes. You know, At the end of the day I can always revisit this and try and move that structure up if necessary. The other thing, the other bonus I suppose, is if this doesn't work out and I haven't made any real structural alterations I can always put the old screens back in. <laughs> that's a, a backup plan. I'm, I'm hoping I, I won't need to do that. So the next thing is to clean this up, make some space and think about fitting those new screens in. I mean, I'm hoping that's going to be a fairly straightforward job. 
but I've long since discovered that very few things are straightforward in this game. So we're kind of getting there. I've made these custom mounts for the to extend the platform out to the edges and the idea is that the TV stand sit on these so we've got the central TV mounted already and this is the outlier I haven't quite figured out the angles yet I'm just getting ready to mount these they're going to have to be mounted kind of pretty permanently I think because there's quite a weight to bear so I'm just tinkering to make sure I get the angles right and it's a tight squeeze getting these monitors in but uh, I think it's going to be pretty good once they're in we're going to have a massive field of view so here it is we've got the screens installed in a first attempt if you like uh, it's looking okay it's, pretty, it's insanely wide I've got to say and uh, far exceeds the bounds of my cockpit structure so hopefully it's going to give me a much more compelling experience of being in the cockpit. I'll, I'll think of some whether there's some way to enclose the cockpit kind of in the manner that it was before, but I'm not really sure that's necessary. So the next thing is to fire it up and see how it flies. So let's go for a test flight. We're at Milford Sound in New Zealand. It's early evening, we're just going to take off on a little bit of a sightseeing trip. We're going to have a stonking crosswind from the right. That's going to make it difficult to get off. This aircraft doesn't deal with crosswinds too well. I don't know whether that reflects its performance in real life, but certainly in the sim, the Twin Otter Extended doesn't have that much rudder assertion. So we need to be careful with that. We narrow taxiway as well. And we use all the runway if we can. Okay, one flaps 10, where's the wind top? There it is, in the distance there. So the wind, crosswind's coming directly from the right, it's about 12 knots I think, so it's going to be trying to rotate us to the right. We need to counter that with the rudder. To do that I'm going to set up some left rudder trim, normally we set rudder trim to right on takeoff, counter the prop effects. This aircraft happens to know we're going to need all the help we can get. So I'm setting it left. Hopefully that's not going to turn into a disaster. So let us go. having this ultra wide display because one of the things that is well known about an ultra wide display when you're projecting a single forward view is you get stretching out towards the peripheries. I've got my zoom factor set to 1 at the moment, wide view aspect is true obviously and um, that gives me a realistic-ish size, you know, it's somewhat life size. If you look, I've got the zoom factor set to 1, 
zoom set so that the virtual cockpit instruments are about the same size as my 2D instruments, probably a little bit larger actually. Uh, I think these are a little bit undersized to fit them on the panel, so these should be slightly larger. But we get stretching at the peripheries. If you look at the gauges on that side, or if I rotate the view, put some gauges on this side, they do get bigger and a little bit smeared out. But it's not such a big deal. Because generally that's peripheral vision. There's Martins Bay. The performance is not too bad, it's a little bit, little bit glitchy with that, all that cloud in front. It's not too bad. I need to lose a bit of speed. Okay, that height's better now. Should be ready for the approach. Getting too slow there. Eighty knots, seventy five knots, trees. Whoa, a little bit off the mark there. Okay, that was one wheel down first. So there we are, first experiments with the new setup are very encouraging, seems to work pretty well. Uh, gives an amazing wraparound kind of feel. You know, peripheral vision is well and truly filled. I think we've got about 160, maybe even 170 degrees. Could do with being a little bit higher. You know, quite a lot of the view to the front certainly is obscured by the panel. There is that, you know, realism factor in terms of craning over the, the panel, although the track IR sensor is a little bit too close. For the current setup, so when you do crane forward, it it loses. Well, I'm not sure whether it's because it's losing sight of the target, or if it's just that it's too close and the um, the, the movement isn't replicated quite faithfully. So uh, maybe some playing with the setup of that. There is a benefit to having that view low down, which is at the sides. I'm getting something of a, a kind of slightly downward view. It's like, almost like I've got part of the side, if you watched when I was doing the experiments with the side views, it's like I've almost got part of that side view back. So that's helpful. I like that. You know, we do have the stretching problem. When I get back into X-Plane, this is obviously FSX today, but when I get back into X-Plane, I'm going to try this new way of setting up the independent window views. So we'll get the same spread, but with less distortion at the outsides. Now, I'm not that fussed about the distortion at the outsides you kind of don't really notice it until you look for it. Now that said, I'm sure it's giving some kind of false impression of speed and so on. The sharpness isn't quite as good as with the smaller monitors because we've got, you know, we've got 50 odd extra pixels in the vertical, I think 56 pixels extra in the vertical view, but, but that's spread over 10 extra centimeters. So the dots per inch, if you like, is lower. And you kind of notice that on first impression, but actually lasting impression is it's sharp enough. You know, compared to the, for, for a while I used a 40 inch TV, 1080p TV, a long time ago as an experiment and that was just too fuzzy. This is not fuzzy by any stretch and I think it's going to be completely adequate. The central view at the moment, it's not, it's not obvious on here, but the colour matching or the brightness matching isn't the same. The setup doesn't seem to be the same as the two outer views. Yep, so that's the new widescreen display. I'm quite optimistic about how this is going to work out. And so hopefully we'll see more of its potential in some of the upcoming flying videos.